hello everybody and uh, that's the, the introduction i'm francois legoff the euclid product manager and i will start with uh, this webinar on uh, version 1.2 of euclid 6. the first agenda point will be on the uh, fixes for known issues that were implemented in uh, version 1.2 and then i will go through some improvements and new features Afterwards, my colleague Jesus will uh, introduce you to the new feature, which is the DNL calculator. And then Mark Roberts will present you some um, uh, the main uh, important uh, things to know about the report generator um, and particularly the most advanced options. Afterwards, uh, Tamash will uh, give you some practical tips for rich registrants using Euclid 6 based on the experience we learned uh, during the past weeks and months. Then uh, during this uh, entire webinar you have the possibility to ask questions using the Q&A panel uh, in your Webex um, uh, software and you can post questions during the entire webinar. Answers will be given during the webinar and at the end uh, already for some of the most frequently asked questions. Before the Q&A session at the end uh, we will uh, leave you five minutes to send any additional questions you might have. After the meeting, we will publish, as usual, on the Euclid 6 website, the recording of this webinar, the presentation. The presentation should be available today, so you can have a look if you want to come back to some points we have uh, addressed during the webinar. Uh, and then later on, we will also provide the written documents with uh, the question and answers received during, this, during today's meeting. So let's start with the, some updates on Euclid 6. Uh, this webinar is on the service release that was made available on Tuesday this week. Um, and uh, this service release 2 of Euclid 6 provides uh, fixes and improvements and different new features, uh, among them hyperlinks and the public API, which I will uh, describe during this presentation. Um, so first of all, the installation of this new version is uh, recommended because, uh, as you will see, it solves some uh, bugs that were reported and provides new improvements, but it's optional. So you don't have to uh, upgrade to the latest version if you are not ready to, to move to the latest version. And you can do that whenever it's uh, more convenient for you. Uh, this version is fully compatible with previous Euclid 6 versions. So anything that is uh, all the data generated with this new version will be compatible with previous Euclid 6 versions and the data generated with previous Euclid 6 versions will be compatible with this version. Uh, Euclid 5.6 files are also still supported so they can be imported in this Euclid 6 version as well. When we published this new version we have uh, published also a news alert on the Euclid 6 website and you might have received an email as well if you subscribed to the to receive these news alerts. Uh, you will find a link with the complete release notes for this release uh, and you can have a look at, at them uh, after this, uh, this webinar if you want more information. During this webinar we will only uh, uh, address the most uh, important things that were implemented, particularly the new features implemented. Together with this release, we have updated the download page uh, on the Euclid 6 website. So have a look and let us know if it's um, uh, better than, than before. We try to uh, make it clearer. And there is one specificity also for this release is that we have made available two updaters, uh, one for the 32-bit uh, desktop installation and one for the 64-bit desktop installation. So this might create some confusion because you have to remember which desktop version you have installed in order to update using the correct updater. Uh, we have provided some uh, instructions on the website. Uh, if you don't remember uh, which is the version you have installed, there, there is some uh, instructions for you uh, to figure that out. In the coming weeks, we will try to simplify this process and provide only one updater for both versions because we see already that uh, this is uh, creating some, some confusion amongst the users. The migration tools and database patch tool are still available, although no changes were made to this tool. So uh, if you have uh, already migrated Euclid 5 data, you don't have to use these tools again. It's only for uh, new users of Euclid 6 who have to transfer data from Euclid 5 uh, that these tools are useful. Let's go through some fixes and uh, improvements that have been implemented in this release. 
Uh, first of all, let's start with the uh, fixes to the printing and the report generation. So although most critical issues were uh, fixed in version 1.1.0, uh, after September last year, we have still received uh, feedback from users having issues with uh, printing or the report generation based on specific data sets. So we have been able to collect these issues and, uh, and provide fixes in this version 1.2.0. Um, and we have put a system also in place in order to fix a uh, newly dis discovered issue in the, in the future so that if you still have uh, specific issues with uh, data sets or dossiers uh, for printing or report generation, you can contact the help desk and we will be able to uh, help you without uh, for you to wait for the next uh, Euclid release. We have tried also to address some performance issues and particularly for the printing. Uh, although it's still sometimes memory consuming, so you, you need to have enough memory to print uh, big data sets with thousands of documents, uh, the execution time has been considerably uh, decreased. So it's faster to print now with this new version. We have also worked on the performance of the import uh, of, uh, of dossiers or data sets from Euclid 5 or from Euclid 6. So it's uh, faster to import data for uh, big files and big databases, so uh, big files containing thousands of documents and uh, big databases of uh, several gigabytes of data. Uh, next point I wanted to, to make on this uh, new version is the Kesar compatibility. So this version is compatible with the current version of Kesar 3.1. So if you are using 3.1, you can update uh, to the new version of Euclid uh, 1.2.0. Uh, one improvement that was made also for Kesar users is that we have created a way to filter a dataset content based on Kesar input information. So this is to help you filling in the Euclid information that is needed in order to perform an assessment in Kesar. And you can use also this filter to export the relevant data uh, if you want to exchange with someone who wants to uh, run a chemical assessment on a specific substance in their Kesar instance. And what you can see also on, on this screenshot, it's not linked to Kesar, but it's uh, an improvement that we did in order to highlight the record that is displayed in a data set uh, in the section tree, so that now you can uh, easily um, see uh, where the record that is displayed is located in your section tree, even if all the sections are collapsed. You see that what is highlighted in bold in the section tree is the place that you are uh, currently displaying displaying in your Euclid application. The next improvement is uh, related to category-based dossiers. Uh, when creating a dossier or exporting a substance linked to a category, um, now we have implemented a different way to uh, select the documents that are belonging to the category members. So the, the other substances part of the category, not the main substance of the dossier, but the other category members. So now the defaults are uh, like this. All the information uh, in the category members is included when you export a file. But when you create a dossier for, for a substance based on the category, only a limited uh, content is added. So only the test summaries, which is the part of the data that is relevant for category members. So you can have a, a look at the updated manual of Euclid if you want to learn more about this new feature. Another improvement I wanted to highlight in this presentation is the bulk actions on records. So now when you are working on a data set, you can uh, uh, right click on a section or select multiple records and do bulk operations on them. So you can delete all records selected or copy all records selected to the clipboard. So here you, you see two examples on this screen. The first one is uh, right click on the section uh, 3.5 uses and with this right click you could delete all records under the uses uh, uh, section or go to a subsection and delete only the manufacturer uses in one go or copy them also in, in one go. A small improvement also but that can be quite convenient in some cases is the sorting of records. Uh, when you have a lot of records within a section and you want to change the order um, instead of uh, clicking on the right click and uh, uh, moving a record up or down one level, you can now uh, maintain the mouse, mouse click on the record and drag and drop 
the record to the position uh, unit inside the section. So in one click you can reorder your record within a section. Let's move on to a new feature that has been uh, implemented in Euclid 6 that was existing in Euclid 5 uh, already, uh, but now that is available in version 1.2 of Euclid. It's the possibility to use hyperlinks. Uh, so when you can create these hyperlinks if you are using a Euclid server version, and when you navigate uh, within a substance or to a document, you can right click on this document or substance or dossier and create a hyperlink that can be exchanged with other users of the same server. So the, the users who have access to this link or if this link is uh, presented in different uh, web pages, uh, clicking the link will open the dossier, the Euclid installation at the location uh, of the specific document or specific substance or dossier selected. Again, again there is more uh, explanations in, in the user manual of Euclid for this functionality, which is available for the Euclid server versions. The last uh, new feature I wanted to uh, highlight in this presentation is the, the public API. So it was announced in September that um, we were working on the public API and the beta version was already included in the September version of, of Euclid. Now with this new release, we have the first official version of the public API which uh, can be used by developers who want to uh, create interfaces between uh, our clients exchanging data between Euclid and other applications. It works both with uh, desktop and server versions and uh, the available web services are documented. There is a specific page on the Euclid 6 website, Euclid 6 REST uh, public API, where developers can find more information. Um, if you are building web services clients for Euclid or you intend to build uh, clients, uh, we invite you to contact us, to inform us, so that we are aware of uh, the use uh, you make of Euclid and we are able to uh, offer a better support in the future. Uh, although our intention is to maintain the compatibility of this uh, public API across all versions of Euclid in the future. So these were the main improvements and fixes and uh, new features I wanted to, to show to you. My colleague uh, Jesus will now uh, present you the, a new feature that was added in version 1.2 of Euclid, which is the DINEL calculator. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Francois, and good morning to everyone. My name is uh, Jesus Vázquez Rodríguez, and I'm going to present you a new feature that has been developed for this uh, new release of Euclid 6, and that we call DINEL Calculator. This feature uh, offers you the possibility to calculate and report derived non-effect levels, uh, DINELs, in Euclid, according to uh, the recommendations in ECA guidance on information requirements and chemical safety assessment, in particular, Chapter R8. This feature has been developed in collaboration with the State Secretariat uh, for Economic Affairs, SECO, from the Swiss Confederation. So what's the purpose of this new feature? Uh, DINEL derivation is a key element of the risk characterization of chemical substance. And although in ECA guidance, in particular in chapter R8, it is plain how DINELs should be derived, practical and regulatory experience show that there are recurrent issues, and this feature aims to uh, simplify the DINEL derivation for Euclid users and to report uh, these DINELs and how they were derived uh, more transparently to regulators also in Euclid. Uh, thus, the DNL generator allows you to derive DNLs automatically from the data that is already available in the endpoint summaries of a substance dataset or template and report them back in the corresponding endpoint summary under Section 7, Toxicological Information. It is important to note that currently the DNL calculator only supports uh, the derivation of workers and general population DNLs for long-term systemic effects and for oral, dermal, and inhalation routes, according to the ECA guidance. The current version does not support the derivation of DNLs using human data for acute toxicity, for local effects, or for threshold carcinogens. 
So with regard uh, to how to use this new feature, you can use it by right-clicking the endpoint summary uh, under section 7, toxicological information, and selecting generate denial from the displayed menu. By doing this, a uh, pop-up window will uh, open with the outcome, and this outcome will contain the results, which are the denials calculated according to ECA guidance uh, chapter R8, and they are displayed in a tabular format by root. The dose descriptor uh, used as point of departure for the selected root and the parameters that have been used to correct it are uh, set by the tool and displayed in a tab that is called dose descriptor as read-only information. The ECA default assessment factors used to address uncertainties in the extrapolation of experimental animal data uh, to real human exposure situations are displayed in another tab that is called assessment factors as read-only information also. At the bottom of this pop-up window, there are four buttons. The edit button enables to change the selection of the initial dose descriptor and some parameters used to drive denials in a pop-up window. The print button generates a report in RTF format containing uh, the drive denials information as it is also shown in section 511 of the CSR. The finish button closes the calculator after saving all the results in the corresponding endpoint summary under section 7, toxicological information. And finally, the cancel button closes the calculator without any further action. But a bit more about the edit mode. This mode will allow the user to select uh, different dose descriptors, uh, or dose descriptor as starting point for the denial derivation, use non-default correction factors for differences between human and experimental exposure conditions, and uh, use non-default assessment factors. But it's important to note that if uh, uh, other than non-default values are used, the user will be required to provide an adequate justification. About the reporting, uh, all the results will be uh, reported in the corresponding endpoint summary under Section 7, Toxicological Information, from which the denial calculator was started. Uh, it will be reported the uh, dose descriptor that has been used as starting point, the parameters used to correct this dose descriptor and the assessment factors, as well as any justification that has been provided if any other than default uh, values have been used. And this is uh, the NL calculator. I will hand over now to my colleague Mark Roberts, who will explain you a bit more about the improvements made in the uh, Gener generator. report generator. So, Robert, thank you. thank you. Hello there, my name is Mark Roberts. I'll be giving you a brief introduction today uh, to you about the report generator. Um, also, going through the latest updates to this plugin and to qu quickly give you a couple of full examples of how to how to use it. So, first of all, for those um, not familiar. With the report generator, um, it's a plugin that extracts data uh, from nucleus data sets and dossiers to produce a report um, in one of three formats a PDF, an RTF, which is a Word file, or an XML. So uh, the report generator plugin was included in uh, the release of Euclid 6 last April um, last year, um, and in the succeeding releases of of Euclid, uh, the CSR has been streamlined to improve its readability as a standalone document. If you would like uh, further information about the CSR, please visit uh, ECHA's support pages. So in October uh, last year, the advanced features of the report uh, generator plugin were launched. Um, this enables all users to customize their own reports uh, for their own purposes and needs. Uh, ECHA took advantage of this situation to also publish uh, an SBC report template which could be uploaded using the advanced features of the plugin and this would then generate a file which could be imported into the SBC editor. Um, I'll show you this a bit later on. So in this latest release of Euclid version 120, 
uh, there's two things I'd like to highlight. Firstly, um, the SBC report template that I just mentioned is now inbuilt into the report generator. So you can uh, generate this uh, report using the regular wizard. And second of all, um, the advanced features have been updated so that you can now uh, create a report in uh, PDF and RTF formats when launching um, from a mixture product data set or dossier. Um, before I move to the practical examples, um, I'll quickly show you how to launch the report generator in its regular version and also how to launch it uh, to uh, create the advanced features. So firstly, um, you can select the report generator from the Euclid homepage. You can also right click on a substance or mixture product data set um, or dossier and you can launch it from the plugins tab at the top of the Euclid address bar. Um, to launch the advanced features of the plugin, uh, you hit uh, Control Alt and R on the keyboard from any substance, mixture, or dossier, and this will launch the advanced features. In a moment, you'll see how this looks. So, to the first example, this is um, when launching the regular report generator. If you right click on a mixture product, as I've done here in the example, um, the first step of the wizard appears, and this has uh, two things I'd like to highlight. First of all, you'll notice that the there's only one type of report available, that's the current uh, SBC report, summary, summary of product characteristics. Um, currently, this is the only one that uh, is inbuilt into the report generator plugin when you launch it from a mixture product. Um, you can also change the uh, mixture product itself by clicking on the little uh, chain icon which is uh, highlighted in that slide. So if you decide to change the um, uh, mixture product by clicking on the chain icon, um, the usual query box will uh, appear for you which is very similar to all the other wizards in Euclid. Um, here you can not only um, select another mixture of products but you can select a substance or a dossier. Bear in mind that if you change uh, the type of the uh, data set for instance you're working with uh, to a substance then the type of report will also change when you go back to the first step of the wizard. In this case if I selected a substance I would uh, then um, be working with a chemical safety report and not an SBC report. But continuing in uh, the example I started with, with a mixture product, it, when I click uh, next in the first step of the wizard, I then go on to the final and second step. Uh, here there's two things to notice. First of all, you'll see that the only output available is XML. Uh, this is because the SBC report is designed specifically to be outputted in XML format, which can be imported into the SBC editor. Um, you can also then select the uh, directory where you wish to save the XML uh, file. And when you press finish, there's two uh, things that happen. One is that you'll have uh, the report uh, saved where you've uh, selected save it, and it will also appear in your web browser. Um, just to quickly take you through then what happens in case you're not aware of it. Uh, for the SPC uh, report template, if you want to upload it into the SPC editor, you go to the SPC editor tool, you then select a single product. This is because the XML is only uh, supported with a single product. And then you uh, fill in some details, for instance, the product name. You then import the XML and the SPC editor tool will populate with all the Euclid information that's contained in that SPC report. Um, just to give you a, a brief example of what happens if we populate SPC editor, um, if we take the product information tab of the SPC editor, here in the slide you'll see that uh, all the different Euclid fields that are populated with information in the SPC editor. Remember uh, that not all fields in the SPC editor tool will be populated with Euclid information, so make sure you double check to make sure that you're happy with what's entered in those fields. Okay, so uh, moving on to the second example. This is how to launch the advanced features of the report generator. Um, as mentioned in the previous slide, you press Control, Alt and Delete on your keyboard from any data set or dossier. And you'll notice one big difference in the first step of the wizard. Instead of a type of report being pre-selected for you, you can now up upload your own report template. Um, and you do that through the uh, template file which is shown there. And you can also upload a style sheet file which um, 
changes the formatting of the report as you see fit. So for instance, it gives you different colors and tables. And like in the uh, previous report generator wizard, you then go to the next step and you save the uh, destination of the file. Um, also note here that uh, you can also then choose the report uh, format, so you can choose either PDF, XML or RTF as your output, but it will not recognize what uh, format you should be, uh, you, you actually have in the previous step. You'll need to manually uh, choose that yourself. So um, one thing, if your report uh, fails when you're generating it, um, you can check the background jobs in Euclid 6 and this will give you more information as to the errors that have occurred. If you receive a failure when you're generating a chemical safety report or an SPC report, please contact the ECHA help desk because we can help you with that. Um, and another thing, on the Euclid 6 website we've got some example templates. Uh, for you to use. So for instance a doc book and an XML template which you can use to maybe start thinking about customizing your own report templates to use with the report generator plugin. Um, you'll see, you can see the um, web address there for that. Um, and also there's a possibility that Echo can publish your customized reports. Um, so please contact us on that uh, email address there if you would like us to publish one of your templates. And finally, here's some useful source information support, which I've mentioned in the presentation. The Euclid 6 webpage, the ECHA website, where the CSR guidance is kept, the Euclid help manual, and the ECHA help desk. Okay, I'll hand over to uh, Tamash, my colleague, who's going to introduce some tips for registrants. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Hello, everybody. My name is Tamash. Tamash Ramon and I work on the Validation Assistant development. Uh, I will introduce some practical tips for each registrant in general uh, and how to use the Validation Assistant plugin in an easy and efficient way, avoiding any headaches. Uh, some tips for registrants uh, regarding the technical completeness procedure and uh, some links to the Euclid and also to the registration support uh, websites. First, please note that the screenshots used during this presentation are only illustrations. The advices are valid both for initial submissions as well as updates. And also please note that the tips will focus on the technical completeness check performed by ECA. Uh, even though that the technical completeness check uh, is an important step towards successful reg registration, there are several subsequent processes uh, under evaluation and risk management uh, where dossier may be assessed and where providing the um, absolute minimum uh, to pass the technical completeness check uh, step will not be sufficient. Uh, some uh, good practices in general regarding reach registrations is to use the latest Euclid version, Euclid 1.2.0, uh, it has all the new features and uh, fixes that my colleagues talked about before. It has uh, the plugins, which uh, helps you uh, with your reach registrations. And also it's the most up-to-date version. Use the validation pr uh, assistant plugin particularly if you prepare your registration for reach. Uh, it supports reach dossier creation and it also helps to create a complete dossier. It is easy to use and uh, it can avoid you some headaches. You can always access the Validation Assistant plugin from the main Euclid user interface by clicking on the icon highlighted in this slide. It is highly advised that you use the Validation Assistant on your Substance dataset while preparing. Uh, you can do that uh, from the navigation panel of Euclid by selecting the substance you want to validate, right-clicking on it, and then left-clicking on the validate, as shown. Um, after that, you need to select the scenario that applies to your substance. Um, there are several scenarios uh, covered under reach registrations. So for example, if you wish to select, uh, uh, if you wish to prepare a dossier for one to 10 ton standard requirement registrations, then you select accordingly. After 
the validation assistant report will be presented for you. Uh, it is important to note that um, if you click on the failure, then it will be highlighted and you can access the document while the failure has been detected by clicking on the open document on the data set, uh, substance data set icon highlighted on the left picture. Uh, please note the messages. They are there to help you and explain to you what is exactly the failure and how you can fix it. In case you are not, uh, in case this icon is unavailable in the report, it means that you are not having an uh, endpoint study record at all in the select required section. So please then go and create one. You need to correct the failure in the substance dataset. And in case uh, the validation assistant has disappeared, you can click always on the bottom right corner of the user interface on the highlighted icon. That will unhide it. You are advised to not close the validation assistant while doing this, because then you can click the recheck button as highlighted in the first picture of the validation assistant report, which will recalculate the results of your validation. And if you fixed the failures reported before, then you should end up with a correct, uh, complete uh, substance data set. Uh, it is important to note, however, that uh, after you created the dossier from the substance data set, you uh, are advised to run the validation assistant on that one as well, because there are some business rules in this procedure which can be only simulated on dossiers. Uh, please note the disclaimers that are present in the validation assistant report. They tell you what the results mean and how to interpret them. For example, if you have no business rules, uh, business rule failures, it does not mean that you not that you are for sure going to pass the business rule check because there are some business rules which can be simulate uh, which can be performed only in reach IT environment. As per the completeness check, uh, please note that as of 21st of June 2016, uh, additional uh, manual checks performed at the technical completeness checks uh, step by ECA staff. These manual uh, verification checks at the technical completeness check uh, level, uh, which uh, are performed by ECA staff, uh, they check if the required elements are provided in your dossier. Uh, they are only used in case automatic rules cannot be uh, implemented, like for example if you have some sort of deviation in your dossier. They do not check the quality of the provided requirements, however. Validation assistant cannot predict them because they are performed manually by ECA staff. Uh, they focus on certain areas of your uh, submission, substance identification, data waivers, chemical safety report and testing proposals. I am going to go through uh, all of them and give some tips based on our experiences in the last year. So first we start with the substance identity. First of all, in Euclid section 1.4, analytical information, you should provide both the identification and the quantification in the table highlighted before. It's called analytical determination table. You can add the row here by clicking on the add button under the ta table. You need to then fill in the required information by selecting the pick lists. You can end up with two different kind of, uh, uh, you can report the identification and quantification two different ways. Uh, reporting them separately, whereby you need to have two rows, one uh, identification and one quantification. Both of them shall have uh, attachment. You can also report them, however, together in case you have the results uh, in one report. In that case, you should select the purpose of analysis as identification and quantification and also provide the attachment. The next tip is that the UPAC name under the, your reference substance in Euclid section 1.1 must be provided. In cases where UPAC name is unavailable, the chemical name should be put in the same field. 
The next tip uh, regarding UVCB substances is that the manufacturing process description should be provided for the registered substance under Euclid section 1.2. You can uh, make sure that you are providing uh, the manufacturing process description for your uh, registered substance by setting the first highlighted section to legal entity composition. And then the manufacturing process description should be provided in the description of composition text field highlighted below. You are highly advised to use the text templates that are coming with Euclid by clicking on the small a with the arrow icon highlighted in the upper picture and then selecting the composition of UVCB substance. It will give you several points that is highly advised that you address all of them. The next tip also regarding UVCB substances is that the background of the composition should be provided for the registered substance also under Euclid section 1.2. You can add all the composition, uh, uh, all the constituents under, uh, com under the constituent fields. Uh, in those uh, exceptional cases when it cannot be provided constituent by constituent, at least the group of constituents should be provided. In really exceptional cases where the nature of the substance doesn't allow identification of any separate constituent, a justification should exist under the highlighted field, which is the justification for deviation text field. Moving on to the data waivers. First and the most important tip is that please do not report study results as data waivers. If you are unsure uh, that your study results, uh, how they should be reported, then please report them any which ways in one of the study results uh, options. In case, however, an information requirement has not been provided, a justification must exist, which means that the following three fields data waiving, justification for data waiving, and uh, justification for type of information should be filled accordingly. How to fill them? By selecting the data waiving pick list and uh, selecting the appropriate uh, section that uh, uh, selection that applies to your substance. It is highly advised that you first read through all the pre-entered uh, selectable values in case you find the one that applies to your substance, then please tick the box next to it. It will automatically appear in the box highlighted on the bottom left. If neither of the pre-entered uh, justifications applicable for your substance, then please select other and provide a short description of the justification in the field right next to it as illustrated. In case uh, a detailed justification is needed, uh, you should provide it in the highlighted text box. Please also avoid only, ref only referring to endpoint study records or different places in the dossier because these checks uh, performed by ECA staff and uh, they are uh, checking completeness. They are unable to check anywhere for your dossiers, but uh, Please do refer to other sections, but uh, also provide the summary of your justification in the fields we discussed before. Some tips based on the chemical safety report. So basically, if the registered tonnage is 10 tons or above, then the CSR must be provided under Euclid section 13. Of course, unless it is a joint CSR provided by the lead registrant, for example. If a CSR is not attached, an exhaustive justification must be provided, which is in line with REACH Article 14. In the one of the boxes highlighted uh, there, it is also under Section 13. Please also include why is it in line with REACH Article 14. Moving on to the testing proposals. Uh, each testing proposal on the registered substance and on vertebrate animals must include consideration for alternative methods. 
which means that uh, if you select uh, experimental study planned in the highlighted field on the upper part of the screenshot, then you must provide the consideration for alternatives on the text box highlighted below. This information, however, will always be published for third party consultations. And uh, there are also text templates available for you in this section, these uh, cases as well. By clicking on the same icon than before, you can select the experimental study planned testing proposal on vertebrate animals uh, point. And the same applies here as before, that you should also uh, all, always uh, you should try to um, address all the points mentioned here. Some useful links. Uh, before that, however, I must mention that uh, we are not able to answer any questions regarding the completeness of your dossier via help desk or any personal emails to our staff. We are only able to perform the technical completeness check in Reach IT, and the results will be, uh, and uh, we will notify you about the results. So you can know more about these manual checks uh, that are performed at the technical completeness check step uh, for the following link, and uh, you can always contact us uh, via ECA help desk. Now I will hand it over to Francois. Thank you. Thank you, Tamash, and thank you for uh, your participation and the uh, questions you sent. We are currently uh, working on answering them, and what we can do now is to leave you five more minutes to uh, send your questions, and I will uh, come back in five minutes to answer the, answer the most frequent questions. So thank you, continue to ask questions, and uh, we will be back in five minutes. Welcome back. So we have selected uh, some questions that were frequently asked during the webinar. So the first one is about the update and the installation of the new version. The question was whether it was possible to move directly from uh, the first version of Euclid 6, 1.0, to 1.2. So yes, th this is possible. And you can use the updater to upgrade uh, your desktop version or, or the server version directly to 1.2.0. There is a question about the search functionality, the advanced search, and the fee calculation plugin. Uh, you might have noticed in this version 1.2 that uh, the icons to reach these uh, plugins have di has disappeared. Uh, these features have not been implemented yet. Uh, for the first one, the uh, for the advanced search functionality, we are now developing a separate application that uh, will provide more uh, powerful search possibilities, but only to Oracle database users. And our intention is to start a beta testing with uh, interested parties in March. So we will uh, communicate on that uh, in the coming weeks. For the fee calculator, uh, this feature is currently deprioritized for development. But as soon as we have a, a better idea of this, when this feature can be made available, we will communicate on that as well. Um, there was a question on the category dossiers concerning uh, the category members and uh, what is exactly the content that is filtered out from the category members when creating a dossier? So basically all the uses and uh, GHS information, for example, is excluded for the category members in the dossier. And also uh, the information of uh, on analytical methods, section 8, section 11 on guidance on safe use and section 13.1. So all the endpoint study records, the endpoint summaries, and the composition and the substance identification, of course, are included in this category members. There was a question concerning the I API. So what does it mean? It means the application programming interface. And it's a tool that can be used by developers to implement interfaces between uh, their application and, uh, and Euclid. This is, for example, what we use to communicate between uh, Euclid and Kesar and other uh, developers of other tools could implement also now with this public API um, interfaces and and, uh, and software to communicate between their application and Euclid. Um, 
One question concerning the DNL calculator, um, whether it is mandatory or not. It's not mandatory, but we still recommend to and encourage all the users to use it to uh, improve the consistency of uh, the DNL derivation and to make sure that uh, the guidance, ECA guidance, is f f followed as a starting point. But it's not mandatory, and you can still fill in fill in the information directly in section seven of Euclid. And uh, there was a question concerning the possibility to develop a PINEC calculator. Uh, we are currently working on that, so in the next versions of Euclid we should make available a, a PINNA calculator to fill in information of uh, the ecotoxicological summary under section 6. A question on KSAR now, um, about the compatibility between Euclid and KSAR. So in the past uh, there were some breaking changes uh, in a KSAR or Euclid uh, application that did not allow us to maintain the compatibility between these two versions. But now uh, we are we don't do any changes like this. And uh, the aim is that KSR releases and Euclid releases uh, will still be compatible between each other. In case there will be a, a breaking change uh, for the compati compatibility between these two applications in the future, then we would synchronize the releases to make sure that uh, uh, the new KSR version is available with the, a new Euclid version. But uh, uh, now Euclid uh, 1.2.0 is also compatible with uh, KSAR 3.1. So as uh, it was the case for Euclid 1.1.0. There was a question concerning the report generator and the use of the advanced functionalities of the report generator. Um, currently on the website, Euclid 6 website, where we provide documentation on the use of these advanced functionalities, we have not provided yet examples of style sheets. So what we will do, um, I think before the end of the week, we will publish examples of these style sheets uh, so that you can use them as a starting point and you can modify them if you want to generate a bit different reports uh, based on Euclid information. Uh, one question for the validation assistant. Um, was someone was asking, uh, how to know that the latest version of the validation is assistant is uh, installed in Euclid. So the only way is to install the latest version of Euclid. So by keeping Euclid uh, up to date, the, you will have always the latest version of the validation assistant. So if you want to be made aware of the new versions of Euclid, you can use inside the application this uh, update notifier in your user preferences. And this will uh, um, inform you whenever a new version of Euclid is available. And if you want to know whether changes were made to the validation assistant in a Euclid release, you can refer to the release notes and you will see a high level summary of the changes that were made if uh, changes were made to the validation assistant. Um, so that's all I think for, for today. Um, the remaining questions will be answered until uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Helsinki time and uh, otherwise we will also provide you with uh, answers to your questions in a written document uploaded on the Euclid website. So I would like to thank all the presenters today, uh, Jesus, Mark and, and Tamash, all the persons uh, answering questions, uh, Zord, Zoran, Anika, and uh, thank you also for your participation and for providing us with uh, feedback. So if you have any feedback on the Euclid releases, uh, please contact the help desk and uh, we will uh, address the issues or take into account your, your comments. Thanks a lot and uh, see you for the next webinar.